Hi, my name is Valerie Leonard. I am the founder of Nonprofit Utopia. We're the ideal community for people who want to start, manage, and grow their nonprofits. If you've been with us for the past month, you know that we've been doing a deep dive on Form 990. We showed you how to read the 990 and what people who look at your 990 might think when they read it and also showed you how to present yourselves in the best light. We showed you how to use it for marketing purposes and how to spot red flags for ethical reasons. And today we're going to focus on performance management. All right. And when we think about performance management, typically, typically, most of us, the first thing we think about is, you know, what happens with the programs, right? What are the outcomes? And that's um, commonly how we use it. But today we're going to be looking at operations, right? We're looking at performance management for the whole organization with the focus on everything else, <laughs> you know, everything that is not a program, right? So you can determine the health of the entire organization. And it's important that the entire operation is strong so that you can, in fact, support those programs and make a bigger impact on your clients and communities. So we're going to share with you a review of Form 990. If you need to go into further detail, I suggest you go to our YouTube channel and review the other videos that we have that go into deeper detail. We're going to talk about performance management, what it is, benchmarking, what it is, as well as KPIs and dashboards. So what is Form 990? Form 990 is an informational return. That means you're disclosing information about the organization. You're going to talk about the organization's finances, the organization's management practices, policies and procedures, the governance practices, the people who work for you, you know, at the very highest levels. So there's a lot of information that you have to disclose in exchange for getting that tax exempt status. You file this annually in lieu of 1040s that, you know, the individuals as well as for profit organizations have to file. So when we speak about operations performance management, in a nutshell, we're looking at performance of every aspect of the organization, and we really don't focus quite as much on programs, but there are some people who like to look at it. But when we look at operations, technically, we're talking about everything except programs. But why is operations so important? Operations is very important because your operations are supporting the programs that you're using to make a difference in the world and to fulfill your mission. If you don't have strong operations, chances are you're not going to be able to fulfill your missions, you know, to the best of your ability, right? So when we speak of operations performance management, we're looking at coordinating those internal systems so that you can improve the quality of your program so that you can improve the impact you're making so that you can improve your strategy as well as your I'm sorry as well as your quality and your costs and your productivity so it is really looking at your capacity overall and when we speak about benchmarking we're basically looking at comparing yourself you can either compare your performance to yourselves over time, you know, looking at trend analysis and just thinking on average, you know, what is a good goal or objective based on what we know about ourselves. Or more commonly, you can use those data to compare your organization to like organizations. And when I say like organizations, I'm talking about organizations that are in the same community as yours, organizations that are doing the same thing that you do, organizations that have similar revenue um, that you have, et cetera, et cetera. This way you're not comparing apples to oranges. You know, you're not comparing yourself. If you're a startup, you're not comparing yourself to institutions and what things quote unquote should be, but you're really looking at your organization as compared to organizations that are like yourselves. 
and you can get that information from Form 990. I like to use Form 990 because you have information all at your fingertips. You can look at your organization literally side by side against other organizations. And this is really generally information, although it's public, it's somewhat hard to find. So if you look at the Form 990s, it's all there in a uniform standard way and you can compare apples to apples. Again, this can be internal uh, so that you can manage yourself a little bit better or it can be external. So not only are you managing yourself a little bit better, you're also being a little bit more strategic so that you can uh, be more competitive and if not competitive at a minimum you know what organizations that are similar to yours are doing and you in terms of performance and you can make a goal to at least be in that range so when we look at key performance indicators or kpis we're basically looking at those measurements that you use to measure you know your progress towards your goals and objectives and it also helps you to understand the health of an organization. So I, I like to compare performance management KPIs to, you know, what we do, you know, when we manage our blood pressure rates, when we manage our sugar levels, we're taking tests on a daily basis. And those are an indicator of how healthy we are over time. And we set our goals and objectives accordingly. And so KPIs are just like that. All right, a dashboard is a way of looking at how you're doing across several measurements at the same time. All right, so it's a visual representation. And what you have here, this is a picture of, you know, this is an example of a dashboard. Your dashboard doesn't have to have as many um, KPIs. Each one of these graphs represents different KPIs that you're looking at. You can have as few as one, right? You might just be laser focused on one KPI or you can have several and we'll show you an example. All right, so where do we find these data to create dashboards? You will have that data um, for, with your programs. You'll have data you know, throughout your organization based on whether we're looking at financial performance, fundraising performance, or uh, program performance. I like to use the Form 990 because it's a simple presentation of the information. You know, sometimes the audited financials are not quite as easy to follow, but it's also a comprehensive set of data that are all found in one place. And because not every organization is making their audits public, you can take the um, 990s of your organization and literally put them side by side with other organizations and you can make a apple to apple comparison because everybody's filling out the same information on the same form. All right. So when we look at the form 990, as we indicated before, um, you can pull this information and we're just focusing for today on the financial information but again form 990 has so many data points that you can track all right so when we look at part one the summary that's really a snapshot of of what the organization is doing so you're looking at the activities you're looking at the mission as well as your financial performance revenues and expenses at a very very high level so that's a good place to pull some information from you can also go to part eight, which is your statement of revenue, which is much more detailed information. And for, remember, for every one of these blanks, that's an, that's a data point that you can track. You can use this part eight to get, you know, you know, what is the source of revenue, grants, program service, other revenue and miscellaneous revenue. And each one of those you can track over time. Some people just look at the total revenue over time, but others might be more interested in just how those various components of revenue change over time. All right, so 
part nine, you can look at the statement of functional expenses and your functional expenses are basically your expenses that are divided over administrative expensive fundraising expenses as well as your program and it gives you a good sense for how much money that comes in is actually being spent to go on programs and you can have different markers to um, indicate you know where you should be quote unquote or you know also compare where you are with other organizations. Ideally, you want to spend anywhere from 10 to 15 percent on your management and general expenses, about 10 to you know 15 percent on fundraising, and then the remaining 70, 75 percent on program services. Now, What's interesting is not all organizations are made the same and also not all organizations are at the same level of development. So that mix could change over time. You know, when you start up, you're probably going to be spending more on administrative expenses because you're taking time to put the meat on the bones of the organization. But over time, those are some targets, you know, the targets that I share um, the 70 percent for program and 30 percent on general administrative and fundraising combined all right so again you will fill this out you'll look at this for your own organization and compare where you are to similar organizations organizations that do what you do organizations that have similar revenue um, organizations that are around the same age, organizations that are in your same community. And it helps you to craft a story. It helps you to get a real uh, reality check as to how you're doing versus, I, I would say, your colleagues as opposed to the competition. All right. So, and also using that information, these benchmarks can help you to actually build stronger partnerships. And when I say that, you um, understand where potential partners are in terms of their finances. You understand their strengths and weaknesses. And you share that with everyone who you are going to have a potential partnership with. And it actually cements your bond and it helps you to um, have strategies um, that are more tailored to the group based on your capacity as a group. All right. Um, part 10, the balance sheet. Your balance sheet is a snapshot of your organization's financial health at any given time. And usually this is at the end of the period, you know, um, the end of the year, if it's on the Form 990. So it'll have things like your assets and your liabilities and then your net assets. All right. So these are really good indicators of financial health um, in terms of liquidity. And when we talk about liquidity, we're looking at how much cash you have on hand, how many assets you have that can be sold for cash and how quickly and the same, um, the liabilities, you know, how much money you owe, you know, how much money is going out of the door and all of that good stuff. And hopefully you have more money coming in than going out. But again, this is assets versus liabilities as opposed to your income statement or statement of revenue where you're looking at how much money, you know, you're generating from grants and contracts and how much is going out in terms of expenses. The two statements together give you a very good sense for the health of your organization and you can pull different data from those different sheets and really get a sense for how healthy your organization is. So this chart is community improvement organizations in Chicago 60624 zip code. We're calling it community uh, for our purposes. And Chicago 60624 zip code includes parts of North Lawndale, parts of East Garfield, parts of West Garfield, parts of Humboldt Park. 
And what this chart is, we pulled certain information from certain um, organizations, 990s, and these are organizations that classify themselves as community improvement organizations. And this information from 990s, we actually captured from a database um, from GuideStar. All right, so we're able to separate separate out those organizations that are community improvement organizations in the community, and we sorted them low to high by total revenue. All right, so this chart will give you an indication of how those organizations as a group are functioning individually and then as a group in their segment, which is community improvement. And then it also compares this segment to the zip code average. So the individual organizations can understand how their total assets stack up with the zip code average or the segment average. And the same for all of these other columns. All right. So how does this help you? All right. This can be used for a benchmark, right? The segment average, you can use that as a benchmark and compare your performance and also set your goals. You can use the zip code average again to compare your performance to other organizations in the community as a whole and also to set goals and objectives around these particular kpis so you can use total asset as an indicator cash and equivalents as an indicator or kpi net assets etc anything that can be measured that you think is relevant to telling your organization's story can be used as a KPI. All right, and here is an example of how we use those KPIs to do a dashboard. All right, as I indicated before, a dashboard is basically a visual representation of various KPIs, and you can really, at a glance, you know, get a snapshot for how the organization is doing. In this example, and again, you might wanna use different variables. Um, we're looking here at the organization's revenue. We're looking at the organization's cash on hand, their expenses, and then comparing their cash on hand to their accounts receivable. All of this between 2019 and 2023. This is data from an actual organization. We did not reveal the name of the organization. All right. So this first chart is looking at the revenue between 2019 and 2023 over time. That's in the blue, the blue columns. And then the red line graph is showing you how much we see a change from year to year. So in 2019, between 2019 and 2020, you see a steep decrease in revenue as well as a steep change for the worse, right, in revenue. And everybody knows that between 2019 and 2020, we had a shutdown around the world. So that impacted this organization as well as all of us. Right, so we can see that over time by 2023, they reached a historical high, so they are out of the woods. Um, so you can look at the blue and see that you know they have a historical high, and then you can look at the red and see that they have stabilized their cash flow, right? Because this red line is not. Um, you don't see as many peaks and valleys. You know, the peaks aren't that high. All right. So then we look at the cash on hand, which tells you a different story. Even though we see a stabilization in terms of a change in revenue, if we look at the cash on hand, we see that as revenue is growing, the cash on hand is actually decreasing, 
right? So it is possible to be revenue rich, but cash poor, right? Because the cash is what we have on hand, all right? And then this chart on the bottom right, this is showing you the accounts receivable versus the cash they have on hand. So in the blue is the cash on hand. The purple is showing you the gap between their accounts receivable or what they expect to have coming in and what they have coming in. So as you can see, that gap has widened significantly and they're now um, turning the corner and hopefully closing the gap. When we look at the expenses over time, we see that there is a sharp decrease in expenses between 2019 and 2021. And then they kind of fluctuate between 2021 and 2023, but they are towing the line. We can see a decrease in expenses between 2022 and 2023 and they are towing the line on expenses probably in response to the fact that they have so little cash on hand so this can be used to really help you make solid decisions and turn on a dime right all right so you can also use your guide star profiles to augment form 990 as well as the information that you have on Schedule O in Form 990 to tell a deeper story that goes beyond just your financials. So when we speak to our programs, yeah, you could talk about the metrics. You know, those more savvy organizations are going to include on Schedule O and even, you know, in the section about programs, they will include their metrics. Here, in GuideStar, they're using their profile, you know, they're using, they're taking the opportunity because they have elected to disclose more information. This is a platinum level of disclosure. So they are sharing much more information. They are sharing over time some of the detailed metrics that they're using to measure their success. So they have included things like the number of job skills training courses and workshops they've conducted, the number of financial literacy courses they've conducted, the number of those who have successfully gained employment after counseling, the number of participants who gain employment in general. And, you know, the list goes on. This is just a snapshot of a portion of their, you know, of, of the metrics that they're disclosing. All right, so I hope that you can see for yourself that it is really, really helpful to use Form 990 beyond just disclosing to the government every year what your revenues and expenses have been. You can actually use Form 990 as a tool for performance management. And in turn, when you use your tools for performance management. This can help you to tell an excellent story to your partners, an excellent story to people in the community, an excellent story to potential funders as well as to the government. And then, you know, success breeds success. But most importantly, you use this information so that you can feed back into your strategic planning process, you know, better understand how you stack up against you know other people or other organizations in your environment and also helps you to continuously improve your quality continuously improve your performance um, operationally so that you can deliver the programmatic outcomes that you so desire all right if you have any questions feel free to post below thank you so much for your time thanks for listening take care Bye-bye.